welcome back to DBX Labs. Now before we get to today's video, I'd like to go over what I plan to do with this channel now that we've completed everything on this initial uh, chapter sheet that I have right here. So continuing on with the uh, tetrazole um, derivatives that Engager listed in his paper, there's several highly energetic derivatives that we can uh, go towards from just the basic uh, five amino tetrazole um, compound, which I have a good amount of, um, so it should be pretty easy to um, go to different compounds from there. Plus, if I, have, uh, if I ever have to make more, I have uh, a good amount of this um, amino guanidine bicarbonate, um, and I would just go upon that route that I showed in a previous video. So first we have sodium 55 azotetrazole. Um, many people have uh, made videos on this, uh, and this this compound acts very similarly to the nitrotetrazoles um, in terms of uh, brilliance, uh, and um, we could make uh, the silver salt of this, and I'm sure that that would be uh, very explosive uh, similar to the silver salt of nitrotetrazole. Um, and then from there, uh, you can convert that to 5 hydra azotetrazole, uh, which is what Reactive Chem did in his most recent video. Uh, well, actually, two videos prior. Um, and then he further converted it in his most recent video to 5 azetotetrazole, otherwise known as tetraazoazide which is one of those compounds along with isocyanogen tetraazide that uh, really stands out for their um, explosivity, um, mainly due to the fact that um, they have so many nitrogens in them in comparison to carbons uh, or other atoms for that matter. Uh, but for a, for a organic compound, it, it really, ranks very highly, um, like I said, along with isocyanogen tetraazide, and um, uh, it, there seems to be a trend where when, um, when there's a ratio of one to seven of carbons to nitrogens and few other atoms in the compound, uh, that's really as far as you can go for uh, throwing nitrogens into an organic molecule. Uh, and then um, uh, if we go up to diazotetrazole um, from 5-ATZ, uh, that's a fairly simple reaction, um, although it shouldn't be taken lightly because it, uh, diazotetrazole is known to explode in solution, so we'll be very careful in that reaction. That's where I plan to go. Um, no one's made a video on this yet, uh, but it's in the Engager papers. And, um, uh, like I said, that, that has to be monitored very closely because I don't plan to have a detonation in solution, but I will take precautions, uh, as if I am assuming that there will be. Um, and then if we successfully make this, you can, um, uh, acidify the solution, uh, which puts it in a stable state. It forms a different compound, um, which then can be basified again to form this um, intermediate to 5,5-bis-diazotetrazoleal um, hydrazine, which is once again one of those compounds uh, that has that nice ratio of 1 to 7. And um, I haven't seen any references to this besides the engager papers anywhere and um hopefully we can look into making this uh and testing its properties uh, for being such a nitrogen rich compound now on to today's video i'm going to be looking at the explosive mixture that forms when you mix urea with nitrite salt such as sodium nitrite this explosive mixture is practically undocumented on YouTube. Uh, I know that uh, the Mr. Bungie made a video on it with a small scale detonation. 
uh, but it didn't explain what the actual mechanics of the explosion were, uh, what led up to it. Because as you'll see in the videos uh, that I'll put in this video, this mixture doesn't just go off like uh, flash powder, gunpowder, um, other mixtures that uh, burn or explode will. This melts first, bubbles a lot, I would assume releasing ammonia, and then out of nowhere it detonates. And um, like I said, you'll, you'll see that in this video, and hopefully by looking at the footage that I get, we'll be able to see what is the actual um, mechanism that causes this mix to explode. Now, it might have been hard to see in those clips, but this mixture is not as strong of an explosive as many other secondary explosives. It uh, is a real sign that its detonation velocity is really not that high. I'd estimate it's no more than 1,000 meters per second, uh, maybe a little bit higher than that. But here's the can from the second shot that I got of this mix detonating. Um, and as you can see, it it's really not dented that much. Um, if this were a uh, a different explosive that uh, is actually used as an explosive, it'd be hard to tell if this was even a can left over. Uh, and that's because I, I used maybe three or four grams of this mix on top of it. And that's a bad idea if uh, you don't understand how an explosive acts. But I've, I've used this um, on enough scales to, to kind of tell that it's not going to do much, even at that scale. And it didn't do much. Um, it only made a slight dent into the steel can, um, whereas something like trinitro-oxypropane, um, a, a similar mass, would rip that can into bits. Now, when you think of explosive heterogeneous mixtures of this sort... Urea is sort of the oddball compound in this mix. Uh, sodium nitrate, uh, nitrite is a good oxidizer in its own right. Uh, but urea is really sort of a weak um, reducing agent. You would most often find uh, a metal such as aluminum or mag uh, magnesium to couple with sodium nitrite and make a good flash powder. But urea is kind of um, the weird compound for being in this explosive mixture. So I came up with some ideas of why this explosion might occur. I'll explain my thinking in order of which it came to mind. First, I thought, well, there's sodium nitrite in this reaction. Uh, there must be some sort of diazonium salt that forms, and most diazonium salts are explosive. This is explosive. It must be some diazonium salt in the reaction that forms and uh, gives way to the explosion. Then again, uh, the problem with that is diazonium salts don't really form um, in any circumstances unless you are uh, putting the sodium nitrite or the nitrite salt into an uh, acidic environment. And that's not in occurring in this reaction whatsoever. So we can kind of cross that out for now. Um, the next thing that I thought was, well, 
sodium nitrite, even if it's not forming a diazonium salt, once it's heated up, it's producing a lot of nitrogen dioxide. And there must be some um, sort of oxidation with urea uh, that's transpiring. And um, that's giving way to the explosion. But that really doesn't make sense either because uh, urea is, like I said before, it's not the best uh, reducing agent. And you wouldn't see an explosion result from just a, a lot of the oxidizer. I mean, uh, it's similar to like putting a bunch of potassium nitrate in sugar. You're not going to expect an explosion uh, because the reducing agent is a not, not, it's just not a powerful reducing agent. Um, so that leads me to my third hypothesis of what's going on here. And that's the oxidation to nitrate. So here I outlined a possible oxidation reaction that might transpire um, that could potentially cause uh, the explosion. And uh, I, I developed this thought uh, after looking online on the Science Madness forums um, where people had talked about um, uh, urea reacting with nitrate salts uh, in forming explosive heterogeneous mixtures, uh, but they never really settled into uh, one conclusion, which didn't help, but it told me that people had tried this with nitrates rather than nitrites, and um, found that the mixtures were indeed explosive. I tried that out with potassium nitrate. I do not have any sodium nitrate on hand, uh, but with potassium nitrate, um, as you can see, it really didn't work out that well. Um, nothing too reactive happened, um, and I don't actually think anything uh, chemically changed uh, besides the mix just melting and rolling off of the can, um, as you can see. But uh, maybe with sodium nitrate, it's different. Um, but until I get my hands on some, on some sodium nitrate, um, I can't prove that or disprove that. Now, I, I was thinking that um, sodium nitrite might decompose similar to how potassium chlorate decomposes um, uh, through heat into perchlorate and chloride. Um, and if that could somehow happen in the presence of urea, you could produce sodium nitrate, nitrogen dioxide, um, nitrogen gas, and sodium oxide. Um, the nitrogen gas, the sodium oxide, and the nitrogen dioxide, I don't think have much to play in this reaction. Um, that's not where I'm going. But the sodium nitrate is what uh, the people on the Science Madness forums, that's what they were talking about, being um, uh, explosive in mixture with urea and uh, with strong heating. So that's my best guess as of right now as to how this, uh, this mix is explosive. And um, uh, just to add on to what I was saying with the Science Madness forums, uh, they were pointing in the direction that uh, the sodium nitrate was forming urea nitrate, um, which, in case you didn't know, is an explosive compound. Then again, that's also unclear because that needs a detonation to set it off. Um, it won't just detonate uh, from strong heating, but uh, maybe something else that I'm missing is going on. Or it could be a mix of all three things happening. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, I'll send you guys off with some footage of my homemade Marx generator in action. And um, I'll see you guys next time.